Now again, before specifically we start with an individual thinker, uh, one more aspect let me also discuss. You see, as uh, or in the very beginning, uh, let us understand that uh, we are going to study groups and their effort to achieve something. Because whether you talk about government, government is nothing but a group of people. Any corporate organization, a civil society organization, an NGO, each one of these, these is nothing but a group of people. So that means it is a cooperative activity. It is a cooperative activity directed towards attainment of a goal or a set of goals. So ultimately our study is going to be that of what? It is a study of cooperative activity activity of group of people that is all, all we are going to study so that very complexity that is involved in the human endeavor when it is undertaken at a larger scale that is what primarily we are going to study our okay, to be more simple if you have to present it more simply our study is all okay, it is going to be the understanding of the complex mechanism that is involved within a group activity or group activity that is at a larger scale. So through these thinkers we will try to simplify this complex mechanism. So we will try to simplify for we, are, we, we try to make this very complex mechanism simple and understandable so that it becomes meaningful in the let's say actual operation of groups or what we refer to, to us the more relevant is going to be government but whatever that might be in a way we are talking about understanding the activities moment to say activities of a group activities of a group is always taken up mostly taken up through what an organization an organization so that means we are going to study what? Organization. Generally, conventionally, organizations are represented through a triangle. Conventionally. So if you have to pictorically depict an organization, I depict it through a triangle. Why? What is the rationale? What is the justification of uh, displaying or uh, depicting an organization through a triangle? Yeah. Only, so, so I can simply say a straight line or something, superior subordinate is there? Huh? Yes, this is key. Because not only the superior subordinate let me not use those term hierarchy or something but more importantly if you take into account an organization in that organization at the bottom of the organization there are more people as you move higher in the organization the number of people becomes less at the top maybe only one or few so that is why conventionally because contemporary as I was saying let's say this organization Ola or Uber can you represent through a triangle? no you might have to represent it through a cloud safe or star safe or many organization circle maybe a number of different but traditionally what we know as organizations they are this superior subordinate layered organize layered groups or layered organization in which at the bottom of the organization there are more number of people and as you move up in the layer the number of people goes down you know it tapers having a heavy base sharply tapering towards the top 
that's why we represent okay, the the organization through a triangle and again conventionally traditionally we say that an organization comprises of three m's hmm. traditionally we say it's comprising of three m's What is this three M's? Machine, method, and man. Machine, method, and man. That means these are three components of the organization. The, that means the organization comprises of these three major components. Machine. Let me let me let me actually refer to this by a general example. If you say district administration. No, isolating district administration from that of the rest of the state administration and the, let's say, the central government administration. Standalone district administration. It's an hierarchic organization at the top of which the district officer is there. Followed by, let's say, many subdivisional magistrates or, let's say, additional district magistrates. In this way, at the bottom of the organization, many uh, grade four employees. So it's a hierarchic organization with a bottom heavy but very sharply tapering top. If you close your eye and try to visualize district administration, you can have a skeletal picture. Not an individual as district magistrate or district collector or a deputy commissioner, a position. That position being supported by let's say many additional district magistrates then again they are being supported by many subdivisional magistrates all these positions something like a structure will come up or design will come up or not that de very design is nothing but a machine that's the design part so every organization has a design part. That design part is here being referred to as machine. But within that organization, <clears throat> there are a number of processes. Number of what we say techniques through which it operates. Laws, rules, regulations, methods, methodologies, tools. Those are the mechanism through which it operates. It employs certain mechanism. It, 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 it uses certain processes to operate. Those processes, those techniques are here being referred to as methods. And at the same time, in this organization, there is an important component that is human being, man. Now for all these three... What is the living component of the organization? This is the living component of the organization and thereby these two are what is the opposite of living? Non-living. This is the non-living component of organization. This is only the living component. Now coming back, so bro, here we are saying there are three categories. We said we are going to broadly study the classical 
humanistic and there are other contemporary categories are there now when we study these theories we will find that this classical theory mostly has been developed on the basis of two components of the organization that is the non living the machine and the method so moreover it emphasizes in this theoretical development this theoretical analysis these theorists have developed their theory to analyze the organization its functioning by considering by focusing on the non living component so the primarily has focused on the non living component and the humanistic theorist they have focused on moreover the living component that the human component